Hello students, welcome to Baiju's classes. The government of India in the last couple of years has tried to privatize or divest Air India. And very recently, that is on June 19th, 2018, the minister announced that the sale or the divestment of Air India has been put off. So basically for the next couple of years, uh, we will not be sure whether the sale of Air India is going to be conducted or not. And parallelly, it is expected that a standing committee report will recommend that Air India should not be sold for the next five years. This is not the first time that the government of India has tried to divest or privatize Air India. During A.B. Vajpayee government, that is uh, during 2001, the attempt was made but the government of India did not go through the sale of Air India then. So basically, what are the issues related to Air India? We will have a look at uh, the divestment issue in this particular video. The points that we will be covering in this particular video will be 1. The historical background to Air India. Basically, we will look at the points uh, wherein uh, the genesis of Air India can be found. Some of the other important years related to the functioning of Air India we will discuss. Second, we will discuss uh, the biggest issue of merger that is a merger between Air India and the Indian Airlines that was uh, cleared in the year 2007 and what were the reasons for the failure of this particular merger and what this particular merger led to. So essentially we will discuss the issues related to the merger in the year 2007. And third, we will discuss uh, the reasons for the failure of Air India. Fourth, uh, what are the recent initiatives or the steps are taken by government of India. For example, in the year 2018 itself, uh, there were three different proposals put forward by government of India. Ultimately, none of the proposals were accepted by the market players. And finally, we will discuss what is the way forward uh, with respect to the divestment issue or uh, the continued ownership of Air India by government of India. So let's begin with uh, the first point that is the timeline of Air India. Some of the important years that you need to remember with respect to Air India is the genesis of Air India. Air India initially was a private sector company which was owned by Tata Group. And this was named as a Tata Airlines and it was set up by JID Tata in the year 1932. Then in the year 1946, the Tata Airlines was renamed as Air India. Then in the year 1948, Government of India basically purchased 49% of Air India with a clause that uh, which basically said if the government of India wanted uh, it could even purchase uh, extra 2% uh, of Air India. Now please understand some of you might not be aware uh, what is the importance of these particular numbers that is 49%, 51%, 76% or that matter 100% or 26%. All these particular numbers have got a particular importance for a simple reason. Anybody who owns 26% stake in a particular company, we will call them as a strategic owner. And 49% is called as a minority owner, 51% is called as a majority owner and 100% he is the sole owner. That is the precise reason in the year 1948, government of India purchased 49% and said that if they wanted, they could even extend the purchase by 2%. That will lead to what? Government owning 51% of Air India. Then in the year 1953, government of India passed Air Corporation Act and nationalized seven other private carriers also. The importance of Air Corporation Act is that it will give the monopoly of a flight or carrying the passengers through aviation only to Air India and the related companies. So basically this Air Corporation Act which was passed in the year 1953 gave the monopoly of flying in India to Air India. And this particular Air Corporation Act was repealed in the year 1994 as a result of recommendation of a standing committee in the year 1993 which was headed by Pramod Mahajan. This particular standing committee recommended the repealing of uh, Air Corporation Act uh, which was repealed in the next year itself uh, and that is a precise reason post 1994 you will see that uh, the private sector players will start coming into Indian civil aviation market. Then 2003 there was a committee recommendation Naresh Chandra committee just go through this particular committee report and then the most important year will be 2007. In this particular year, Air India as well as Indian Airlines were merged and a new company that is the National Aviation Company of India that will be referred to in the newspaper as NACIL was formed and the headquarters of this particular company was set up in Delhi. Later in the year 2010, 
the company that is NACIL was renamed as Air India and henceforth this particular company has remained as Air India itself which is basically the merger of Air India as well as Indian Airlines. What is the basic difference between Air India and Indian Airlines? Air India basically took the passengers from India to the rest of the world whereas Indian Airlines was basically a domestic carrier. So apart from this then in the year 2011 CAG came out with a report which was a stinging in its remarks with respect to some of the operations conducted by Air India as well as the government of India. That we will look at later when I discuss uh, the reasons for the failure of Air India. Then finally in the year 2017, the losses of Air India mounted or increased to 52,000 crore rupees. This at the end of March 2017 was somewhere in the range of 48,000 crore rupees. Then in a span of a couple of months, it increased to 52,000 crore rupees. The losses of Air India have kept on increasing despite the government of India announcing a turnaround package in the year 2011. The value of the turnaround package or infusion of liquidity that the government of India wanted to do was uh, around 42,000 crore rupees uh, between uh, 2011 and 12 to 2031 and 32. And between 2011 and 12 uh, to 2021 and 22, government of India basically had a plan to infuse uh, around 30,000 crore rupees uh, for the turnaround in case of Air India. So this is a basic timeline of uh, Air India. We will have a look at some of the very important aspects of this. Uh, for example, we will look at uh, the issue of merger year as well as uh, the present context that is post 2018. Uh, what were the issues or what were the steps taken by government of India to divest uh, Air India. Let's discuss regarding uh, the merger issue that is in the year 2007, Air India was merged with Indian Airlines. And one point you need to remember with respect to this kind of a merger is uh, in case of India, the issue of merger of public sector enterprises are usually taken by central government. And even in case of uh, the selling of the public sector enterprises that is usually referred as divestment. In the newspaper, you will come across this particular term. There are actually two terms, uh, disinvestment and divestment. The simple difference between uh, divesting and disinvesting, although majority of the books use them synonymously is, in case of divestment, majority of the partnership uh, will be given away by government of India. Whereas in case of disinvestment, only a fraction of the ownership will be sold by government of India to the people of India. For example, let's say in a company, government of India owns a 90% stake. Out of 90% stake, if government of India decides to sell off more than 51% of the stake, we call this as a divestment. And government of India decides to sell only 5% of the stake, this will be referred to usually as a disinvestment. Usually in the budgets which are presented for respective financial years, the government of India will say what is the divestment target for the respective financial year. For example, the financial year 18 and 19, the government of India has set up a target of 80,000 crore rupees in terms of disinvestment. And this particular disinvestment target will be affected because of non-sales of Air India very recently. So these are the two terms, please be very careful, you will be coming across these two terms in the newspapers. And although the terminology or the difference of between them might vary, basic concept is either divest or disinvest, the government of India will be able to raise revenues out of it. So basically remember these two particular points, one, the decision of a merger of public sector enterprises are taken by the central government and the second one, the decision of a disinvestment or divestment of a public sector enterprises are also taken by the central government. So with respect to this, let's discuss the merger of the 2007 wherein the Air India was merged with Indian Airlines. One point you need to remember as already mentioned, Air India was basically carrying the passengers from India to the rest of the world whereas Indian Airlines was a domestic carrier. So basically in the year 2007, uh, these two entities were merged. Uh, earlier, these two entities were working as a separate units altogether. So before the merger, Air India was uh, the cash maker. That is, it was making a lot of revenues for the government of India, whereas Indian Airlines uh, was entering into losses in some of the years. So what were the issues with respect to this kind of a merger? Let's look at these particular issues. One, the employee headcount was very high. Now basically understand this, in case of civil aviation, one of the standard parameters that is taken to evaluate the efficiency of a civil aviation company is uh, what is the headcount of the company, which will basically convert uh, into employees uh, per carrier or employees per plane. Uh, 
in case of uh, the employee headcount after the merger in case of uh, the Air India was uh, more than 30,000 people and the he employee headcount uh, per plane uh, was more than 200. And by any standards, uh, you take uh, the domestic carriers or for that matter, the foreign carriers, uh, this headcount of 200 employees per plane is very high. For example, Indigo as of now, right, uh, is the only Indian carrier which is making uh, a profit in the Indian civil aviation market. So, Indigo has got a headcount uh, per plane uh, of 111 employees. Uh, so, this is the lowest uh, in case of an Indian carrier. So, the number of uh, employees were very high. What is the impact of this? Higher the number of employees, higher the cost of operations. Higher the cost of operations, uh, lower will be the bottom line or lower will be the profits. Second, uh, instability at the top. During this particular period of a merger that is surrounding the year 2007, there were changes uh, of uh, 4 CMDs or 4 CMDs uh, were changed uh, during this particular period uh, that is uh, in a span of 6 years. And uh, what is the CMD in case of uh, Air India? Chairman and Managing Director. So, in a span of 6 years, there was a change of 4 CMDs. And whenever this kind of an instability is found at the top tier at, or at the top management level, you cannot expect the company to perform very well in the operations. The operations of the company will also get affected. That is what you will see in case of uh, the functioning of Air India. Third one, difference in the work culture and the ethos uh, between Air India as well as Indian Airlines. For example, if I put uh, Air India on the one side, Indian Airlines on the other side, uh, look at the differences here. In case of Air India, the working week uh, had uh, 5 days, that is there were 5 working days uh, in a week, whereas in case of Indian Airlines, uh, there were 6 working days uh, in a week. In case of Air India, every pilot was promoted unconditionally after 6 years. I will repeat it, every pilot was promoted unconditionally after 6 years, whereas in case of Indian Airlines, every pilot was promoted after 10 years or every once in every 10 years uh, with conditions. Uh, that is, if there is a vacancy at that higher tier, only then he will be promoted, otherwise uh, no promotions will be given. And the standard operating procedures were also different for both the entities. So, when you take two different entities which have different work culture, different ethos, merge both of them, the merged entity will go through certain difficulties. It will take a lot of time for the company to stabilize. Even today, the government of India has claimed that the merging between Air India as well as Indian Airlines is not yet complete. So, basically, you will see that when this kind of a merger happens, there were various uh, situations wherein uh, for the same scenario there were two different managers and these two different managers or supervisors uh, were basically one from uh, Indian Airlines as well as uh, Air India as a result of which there was no information sharing between two managers or two supervisors and uh, that led to certain conflicts uh, and uh, it basically affected the operations of the company. Fourth one, uh, two different types of planes. Uh, Usually whenever a plane or a carrier wants to reduce the cost of operations, it will use only one type of a plane which will basically lead to a reduction in the cost of maintenance. For example, Indigo in case of India, irrespective of whether it is flying from India to other destinations out, out of India or within the destinations in India, will use the same flights or same aeroplanes which are made of Airbus. Whereas in case of Air India, after the merger, it used Airbus for the foreign operations and it used Boeing jets for the domestic operations. So, when you use two different types of planes for the operations, the cost of maintenance, cost of repairs, cost of operations and the cost of people that is engineers who are stationed to take care of these particular planes will also increase which will affect your bottom line, push you towards the losses. Next one, ill-timed purchases of 111 planes. Although these 111 purchases uh, or the order for the 111 purchases was cleared in the year 2005 and 2006, uh, Air India borrowed uh, heavily that is more than 20,000 crore rupees uh, to purchase these particular planes uh, and CAG in the year 2011 came uh, heavily on this particular decision to purchase uh, 111 planes. The CAG basically said that it was an ill-timed decision, 
it doesn't make any sense to purchase 111 planes and this was one of the reasons which led to disaster of Air India. These were some of the points which were mentioned in the CAJ report in the year 2011. So basically they purchased the planes at a very high amount borrowed heavily which added to the losses of Air India. Next point, the losses ballooned after the merger. That is before the merger between Air India and Indian Airlines, the cumulative losses of both the airlines was somewhere in the range of 770 crores. And after the merger, that is between 2007 to 2009, the losses of Air India ballooned from 770 crores to 7200 crores. That is in a span of just two years, the losses of a company ballooned by more than 800%. This is one of the reasons why Air India has not been able to overcome the losses and enter into profits and that is a precise reason post 2007 Air India has not even posted a profit for even a single financial year. Next one the government of India in 2002 announced a package for a turnaround that is already as already seen in the year 2012 the government of India announced a turnaround package of more than 30,000 crore rupees which is supposed to be infused till the end of 2021. 2022 and more than 40,000 crore rupees uh, that will be infused uh, till the period of 2031-32. Uh, so basically these are some of the issues uh, which are related to the issue of merger of Air India with Indian Airlines in the year 2007. Even uh, many of the experts have uh, agreed to the fact that uh, this merger was ill-timed, this merger was a bad decision and this is one of the reasons uh, why Air India is in the losses today. Let's look at the reasons for the failure of Air India. First one is the government ownership. Post-independence, we have seen the government of India, especially during Nehruvian period, they set up huge number of public sector enterprises. And no doubt, these public sector enterprises initially worked very efficiently, garnered a huge market share. But post-LPG reforms in the year 1991, majority of these particular public sector enterprises have entered into losses or have entered into the financial distress. The best example is the company BSNL, which is a public sector enterprise. Before the LPG reforms were introduced or the private sector was allowed to participate in the telecom services, BSNL had a highest market share. And uh, this generated a lot of revenues for government of India. But post that, uh, the market share of the BSNL has continuously kept on declining. Today, BSNL is finding it very hard uh, to compete and sustain uh, itself uh, in the market. This happens because of a uh, heavy competition or very high competition in the private sector entities. Uh, and whenever a uh, public sector enterprise uh, has to compete with uh, private sector enterprises, the decision making of a public sector enterprise has to be very faster. But usually we have seen that the decision in the public sector enterprises is taken very slowly because it is owned by government of India. Second point is rising fuel cost. We have seen that the crude oil prices in the last couple of years have started increasing all over again. And whenever the crude oil prices increase, the aviation turbine fuel prices also will increase. And when ATF prices increase, the cost of operations will increase and the profit margins will start shrinking. For example, in the last one year itself, uh, the international crude oil prices have increased by more than 50%. As a result of this, the Air India, the cost of operations uh, in case of Air India has suddenly increased and it has continued to make losses uh, despite government of India infusing capital in this particular company. And as per various estimates, uh, there is no way that the international crude oil prices will be declining in any time soon. So in essence, uh, Despite Air India continuing to receive the infusion of capital from government of India, the cost of operations will remain higher and the profit margins will keep on shrinking. And forget about profits, we have already seen that the Air India is not making profits. In fact, since 2007 and 2008, it has entered losses year after year. Third reason is inability to sustain the private sector onslaught because in case of private sector carriers, they will provide value added services, they will provide quick services, their ticketing prices will be very competitive which cannot be matched by Air India. And in case of uh, serviceability, that is the time reliance in case of uh, providing the services, uh, Air India has got one of the worst track records. That is a uh, on time concept, uh, that is the delivery of services on time uh, is not usually associated with Air India. Fourth point is ill-time merger, we have already discussed regarding this. We saw that uh, because of this ill-time merger, 
the losses of air india ballooned from 770 crores in the year 2007 to more than 7200 crores by 2009 that is also one of the reasons why air india has been a failure and finally very high number of workers already mentioned the workers per plane in case of air india is more than 200 even today in fact it is more than 230 and when the number of workers per plane is very high the cost of operations will be very high the margins for profits will be very less so these are some of the reasons why air india has entered into losses and why air india is on the brink of a failure now so for what you have discussed some of the points have been mentioned in this particular representation look at the left side of it the left side represents uh, how much has been the infusion of capital in the last couple of years that is between financial year 15 to financial year 18 and you will see the government of india has infused uh, more than 13000 crore worth of capital into air india and during the same time period uh, you will see the air india making losses uh, worth 5800 2600 and 3600 and as per a consulting firm cipa the air india's losses uh, will further balloon in the next two fiscal years as per their estimates uh, the losses of air india will be somewhere between 1.5 billion dollars to 2 billion dollars in the next two fiscal years so this is one representation and the lower side of the representation you will see the market share of air india has declined from 20.7% in the year 2012 to 13.6% in the year 2017 so very recently the government of india realizing that air india has entered into losses the labor force in air india is very high and the government of india is forced to infuse capital continuously in a loss making public sector enterprise decided to divest air india and also as already mentioned divesting is nothing but selling the ownership that is a precise reason some of the newspapers will use the term privatization in case of air india so what was an offer given by government of india they basically said uh, they invited bids for 76% stake uh, sale in air india limited apart from this they also said that they will be selling 100% stake in its a subsidiary that is a low cost uh, international carrier that is air india express limited and 50% stake sale in ai sats right airport services private limited so basically government of india put these three units on sale and expected the private sector enterprises or private sector carriers in case of india right will fight with each other purchase these uh, and government of india will be able to garner huge amount of revenues uh, by selling these particular units in the market but to the surprise of government of india the deadline was uh, 31st may 2018 in fact this particular deadline was extended from mid may 2018 to 31st may 2018 to the surprise of government of india not even a single private sector entity or a private sector airline carrier bid for any of these particular companies although air india has got certain positives or certain attractive points uh, to attract the private sector entities for example even today more than 2/5 of the total air traffic uh, to and fro from india that is from india to the rest of the world and from rest of the world to india is uh, controlled by air india itself uh, that is around 42% of the traffic uh, is uh, managed by air india and within the domestic area right more than 13% of the traffic is controlled by air india and air india is a member of a star alliance group and air india has more than 2500 international slots and more than 3700 domestic slots despite having these appealing points none of the private sector entities actually bid for any of these particular entities the reasons which are quoted as a concerns by the private sector entities are these one why the government of india wants to hold on to 24% ownership if government of india wants to own 24% what are their intentions do they want to interfere in the operations or the day to day operations of the air india or would they be giving full autonomy to the other owner which will have a 76% of ownership or stake in air india so this kind of a clarity or the clarity on this point was not given by government of india hence uh, the private sector basically stayed away this is one reason and very recently the minister related to this has stated that uh, even uh, the government of india is ready or willing to reduce this uh, to lesser than 24% but already the deadline time period is over so this is the first point second one uh, by purchasing air india along with air india certain debt will also be transferred uh, to this particular buyer as of now air india has got a total debt of more than 52000 crore rupees and when 
anybody buys a 76% or a new buyer takes over 76% ownership of uh, Air India, more than 33,000 crore worth of debt uh, will be transferred into his balance sheet. This is one of the biggest concerns of the private sector entities. Uh, they are basically saying, why would we invest in uh, a loss making company then also take up uh, the losses of this particular company or the debt of this particular company. So one of the recommendations which have been given by various experts is uh, the government of India should basically take up uh, these losses into their own balance sheet uh, so that the slate is clean uh, and it will be able to attract the private sector entities. Uh, Third one, the employee conundrum. That is, uh, there are more than uh, 20,000 employees uh, even today in case of Air India. If uh, a new buyer or a private sector entity purchases uh, Air India, will they be allowed to fire the employees? Obviously, if a particular private sector entity purchases Air India, one of the things they will focus on uh, the employee number per plane. They would want to reduce the employee number per plane. Uh, but since these employees are basically under the government of India now, Will they be given any protection or there will be any retention policy announced by government of India when the stake sale has happened and uh, government will be allowing uh, these private sector entities to operate Air India at arm's length. What is this? There were two conditions uh, which were not acceptable to the private sector entities. That is first, once uh, a private sector entity purchases 76% in Air India, they will not be allowed to sell this particular stake uh, for a minimum years of 3 years or for a minimum period of 3 years. That is, if I am a company A, I will purchase 76% stake in Air India. For the next 3 years, irrespective of what happens in this particular company, I will not be allowed to sell any of the shares in the market. This is not accepted uh, by the private sector entities. And the second one, uh, for the next 3 years, the buyer should run this particular Air India with the same name or with the same brand name. That is for next 3 years, uh, if I purchase the Air India, I will have to run the operations of Air India under the name of Air India. So the government of India allowed only the private sector players to work at arm's length uh, by purchasing Air India. So basically the private sector entities looked at these conditions and uh, stayed away from uh, bidding for Air India. Then the government of India announced that uh, it will be looking to get AI listed. Uh, that is basically conduct IPO, initial public offering. That is the shares of Air India will be sold uh, by listing this particular Air India in Bombay Stock Exchange. But this is uh, very difficult uh, to get it done for a simple reason. Uh, one of the conditions that SEBI levies uh, or lays down uh, if a company wants to undergo IPO is this condition. This company should have posted uh, profits in at least 3 years in the immediately preceding 5 years. I will repeat the statement here. SEBI lays down the condition for a company which wants to undergo IPO. This condition is the company should have posted losses for at least 3 years in the immediately preceding 5 years. For example, government of India wants to list out, uh, let us say, wants to list uh, uh, for IPO that is Air India in the year 2019. But basically SEBI says uh, from 2019 preceding 5 years, from 2014 to 2019, at least 3 years uh, you should have posted profits. And as already mentioned, uh, Air India has not made a profit uh, post 2007 and 2008. That is a precise reason uh, the immediate aftermath uh, of announcing that uh, Air India will be listed uh, is that uh, the SEBI clarified that uh, it will not be giving any kind of an exemption uh, to a public sector enterprise. Then government of India came out and said on June 19th that uh, the issue of a divesting Air India has been put on a back burner and uh, we will continue to own Air India. Right? This is uh, the scenario or this is the sequence of the events that has happened in the last 6 or 7 months. Having said so, even this decision of the government of India has created certain concerns uh, or there will be certain ripple effects uh, which will be experienced in the coming days. These ripple effects will be one, right now we do not have any clarity with respect to what will be the way forward with respect to Air India. For example, the government of India has not put forward any framework or any plan as to what they are thinking of doing with Air India in the medium term, let us say in the next 3 years or next 5 years. So there is no plan forward. Second issue is the government of India will be forced to infuse capital into Air India. Already in the newspapers, you must have seen that for three years, the 
payments or the salaries of the pilots have not been paid. So basically the government of India will continue to pay for the functioning of Air India. But problem is this, this money that the government of India is infusing into a loss making Air India is taxpayers money and taxpayers will hold the government of India accountable because 30,000 crores uh, that is between 2011 to 2021 uh, is being infused into Air India rather than infusing into Air India which will continuously make losses uh, can government of India use the same 30,000 crores uh, much more efficiently in any other program definitely yes so basically it will come into trouble with respect to this particular point uh, next will be it will affect the disinvestment target for financial year 19 as already mentioned the government of India set a disinvestment target of 80,000 crore rupees uh, for the financial year 19 and this particular target uh, will get affected uh, because of a uh, non sales of or non divestment uh, of Air India and as a result of this uh, you may also find uh, government of India will feel the heat on uh, achieving the fiscal deficit target of 3.2 percent uh, for financial year 19. Fourth, uh, the crude oil prices uh, are not expected to come down anytime soon as a result of which uh, the aviation turbine fuel uh, will be more costlier for uh, Air India and the cost of operations will increase and whatever infusion of capital happens uh, this will not lead to a turnaround in case of Air India. So what is the way forward finally? One point will be the government of India should rope in the experts from the private sector and try to have a turnaround in Air India. Is it difficult? Definitely yes, but it is not impossible. They can do it. Second will be the government of India is trying to sell Air India which is a very big entity and the private sector players do not want to touch such a big entity with a, such a huge debt. Rather than that, the government of India should break up. If at all the government of India wants to wash off its hands from Air India, it should break up the Air India into different uh, right units, try to sell off these different units to different buyers in a market. Since the size will be very small, the debt will also be very low, some of the private sector players might be interested in this kind of a sale. And actually this was initially proposed in the month of June 2018, but later government of India right, uh, did not accept this particular kind of a sale. Finally, and the biggest takeaway for government of India is that there is an expiry period for the sale of public sector enterprises. That is, in the year 2001, Atal Bihari Vajpayee government was on the threshold of uh, selling this particular Air India to a private sector entities. And there was a demand for this particular company then compared to what is the demand for it today. But government of India for various political reasons decided against selling Air India. Today they want to sell it but the private sector entities are not interested or because of various concerns are not willing to buy Air India. And this was a time period that is 2001 or surrounding the time of 2000, it was a time period when the market was booming and there was a large demand or a huge demand for public sector enterprises. For example, you can see that Modern Foods, Bharat Aluminium Company, VSNL, CMC, all these companies which are owned by government of India were sold between the same time period itself and the government of India did not sell Air India then. The lesson that the government of India should take away from the fiasco in Air India is that whenever the market is doing well and there is a demand and a public sector enterprise is not doing well rather than infusing capital into this PSE, the government of India is better off by selling this particular PSE in a market. So this is one of the biggest takeaways that the government of India should take. Otherwise, in case of Air India, further down the line, the government of India will keep on infusing capital the company that is Air India will continue to make losses uh, and one fine day government of India will decide enough is enough and let's wind up the company. In this scenario, it's a lose-lose situation for government of India itself uh, as well as the workers of Air India. Government of India will not be able to generate any revenues or very less revenues uh, because the demand for the assets of Air India will be much much lower than. So these are some of the issues that are concerned uh, with respect to the issue of a divestment of Air India. Thank you.